Welcome to Tech London, a show featuring interviews with London's top creative entrepreneurs, startups, investors, design agencies, internet marketers, and freelancers that make up the Tech London online community, which mostly lives on the Slack instant messaging platform. We rotate through both hosts and guests for these interviews, so you have the chance to hear from multiple perspectives on London's tech scene. Hello, folks, and welcome to yet another Tech London podcast. We're loving the role we're on here. I'm going to get right into it today because I've got my friend Gerald. Gerald, what are you known for and what would you like to be known for, sir? Oh, what would I like to be known for? Well, I'm known for being the founder of Impact Brixton. It's um, a very uh, cool, creative co-working space in the heart of Brixton. And we're very proud that it's the most diverse co-working space in the world. We believe there's more female majority and it's the first and only black owned large scale co-working space in Europe. So proud of that. I keep looking for another black owned co-working space. You ain't find one. No, no, no. I'm kidding. We need more. We need more. And yeah. the problem is we don't have like, actually there's a one more that's opening up soon. Um, I don't remember the name, but they will open, but yeah, we need more, man. We need there's more. another one opening Hackney with childcare. She's mm-hmm. called Anne. I need to introduce you. So anyway, for the listeners, what is, so cause when people hear the work, I talk a lot about co-working here. When people hear the word co-working, um, you know, there's lots of things that pop in. But what's 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 co-working to you, Gerald? Yeah, I think I think that for anyone that doesn't know what co-working is, I think really you should think of it as when you're working at home, which a lot of us are working now, you're working alone, right? So imagine not working alone. Imagine a place where you can go to and meet other people that are working, which provides you the just the, the human connection that often we miss when we're working alone at home or we're working with, within one company and we're not making connections beyond that company. So co-working is a place where, hey, we you can go in and sit wherever you want, um, different environments, you know, and just, yeah, do some work for a few hours. Um, sometimes you can, you can have your own desk. Sometimes it's not your desk. You share it. And so the reason it's co is because we share everything. <laughs> and it's co without the hyphen kids it's co all one word um so as you back in the old days when you were doing your tech startup that's how you found a co-working space and how as you were building your startup how did being in a co-working space help you in that journey yeah i think that i was so lucky that when i was i, I was like most people you start a company is incredibly lonely maybe you're working from home you're working from your house you're working from somewhere where you feel like you're on the journey by by yourself and and i I just remember the whole thing just feeling incredibly lonely and, and hard and difficult and, and just not being able to share those anxieties with people. And so I started looking for places to work. And at the time, Impact Hub uh, had just opened a co-working space in Brixton um, in the in our sort of town hall. So, And there was about 15 different people that were also working on the thing they love and their dream um, and, and a new idea. And, and I just I just fitted right in. I went in there, paid £35, I think, uh, initially a month to use the space once in a while. And I started meeting so many people that felt the same way I was feeling. Lonely, hard, this feels impossible and a lot of them started just giving me the confidence to really feel like I belong here and I can do this and I can I can stay on this journey and ultimately a lot that I, I met a lot of people who ended up being investors or introducing me to investors or advisors and I ended up raising half a million pounds to scale my tech company and I couldn't have done that without that community and so yeah that's how I fell into it it's it's amazing the micro learnings that happen in a community like that, that all the little conversations you have at the sink about, oh, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm just working on this. Really? I should introduce you to George. He's just done whatever he's done with, with that thing. What was, um, what, while we're in this little techie startup thing, I, there was a blog somewhere about your first idea and how, um, and it, it referenced the mum test book, which I'm absolutely you know, in love with. And I think I've read that like five times. <laughs> um, that is an important thing because, and I just want to wrestle that section in here because so many people go, I've got a great idea for a thing and they never test it. And and I've done that. Um, but what, how, how, can you say about your first idea and how it, and how to evolve that? And I think how, how a co-working space or any, any type of community actually helps you get past that. Yeah, I think, 
the there are a few things to unpack here. I think I was lucky that when I, I, when I first had the courage to leave my corporate job to start this tech company, this is a crazy story, but I was walking in Brixton and I found a flyer that said, uh, to, don't study an MBA for an, uh, an MBA. Cause I was thinking about doing an MBA before I started my tech company, come and do this startup MBA. And it was a weekend, 395 pounds, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you, you can become, you learn this startup MBA. So I, I, I picked up the flyer, called the number and the person that delivered the workshop for the three days was Rob Fitzpatrick, the founder uh, and wow. the writer of mom test. So that's how I met Rob in 2013 is he taught me to become a startup founder in three days and we became incredibly great friends. He was writing the book at the time I was in sales and I helped, uh, I helped a little bit because he saw that I was making all the mistakes that he was trying to teach the world not to make. And yeah, I, I was one of the people that he, uh, worked with him and then saw him launch it. And in the end, Rob and I are friends and I teach this idea and the, the principle is really simple. And I, I would say anyone that's reading this book, uh, is listening to this. If you haven't read the mom test and you're building a, a startup, uh, this it's the the first book to be, uh, to 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 pick up, and the reason that is is because when you start, sometimes you don't know whether the idea is good enough. None of us do, right? We think the idea is a great idea, or we we're not sure if the idea is great. And often we make the mistake by going and telling people, "Hey, this is my idea. What do you think?" And of course, most people aren't going to lie to you and and tell you your idea is terrible, Gerald. They're going to say, "Yeah, it's great. You should do it." And what, who's the people that we tell, we tell first? Often we tell our mom. We're like, Hey mom, what do you think about this idea? And your mom is the most likely person to lie to you. So the mom test is based on how do you go out there and figure out if the idea is actually great or is terrible? And it teaches you a few principles and how you do that. I, I love the way in that book, he says, if people start telling you it's great, get out of there. And, <laughs> oh, Gerald, really love it. I have yeah. to correct you. He doesn't actually say that. He says if they start telling you it's great, um, yep. then they're probably lying to you. So you have to shift the way how you're asking the question. So you got to move on from that and actually ask them something that is actually uh, actually. The, I mean, there, there's a few things, but you've got to you've got to sort of ignore the compliments and then move on to actually finding out. Hey, why is it great? Like, what would it allow you to do? Right. Rob will that, kill me if I didn't correct you. That's that's very accurate. And I was just too I, I panicked, Gerald. You know, I had just I was just <laughs> shouting things out because I was so excited. That, that's um so what is the, the other bit I want to I want to shift gears to too, because you just sent an email from Impact Brixton today, which was about um s scaling down your finances, you know, just just addressing your finances in this, you know, current tough economic climate. There's no nice way to say it. And I really like the way you put that in there because there's, there's a, you know, my world is the co-working world and we have, you know, there's a lot of small businesses and micro businesses around that and creators and freelancers and stuff like that. And we always line in there that said, you know, I don't have a chief financial officer. And for some reason, I, I think, I think everyone I know has a chief financial officer in the Tower <laughs> and Canary Wharf. And I, even though I know they don't and, and kind of leveling the playing field, um, I think sending that to your community really helped, but you know, how, how what would you say about dealing with that? The shit storm we're in at the moment. Yeah. Thank you. And, um, just to be clear, the blog was titled three things you can do to help your business navigate these hard times. And the last couple of months have been for me, some of the hardest for all the business owners and entrepreneurs, a lot of them friends that I work and, and talk to. I, Last week, I heard from maybe a dozen friends that have all closed their businesses. These are restaurants. I mean, um, big businesses, small businesses that are all closing down. And, and even looking at my business, we were really struggling, um, uh, three to six months ago financially. And, and I, I just thought that, Hey, like I, I've just never felt it's never been this hard. And the times are really difficult for a lot of people right now. And sometimes, as I said in the blog, like you get close to tears or you feel like you're, you're just not far from breaking down. And I, I know for me, I can go into this dark place where I avoid my friends, my family, I avoid calls and, and, and it's, a, but it's important to talk about it. And so at a, on a day where I was feeling a little bit more optimistic, I thought I'd put it down on paper. And I think, yeah, for me, 
what really has helped is that it's really important to remember that when you're a small business, you're doing so many things. And one of the things that you can't really, is how we all drop the ball on is managing the finances, right? Figuring out how to manage the cash flow, who to pay, am I going to run out of money? And you're often in Africa, we call it robbing pizza to pay Paul. You're just moving money from X to Y and, and then, and you're just hoping you don't get caught out. And, and yeah, it gets to the point when times get tough like this, you have to be really careful not to run your business down. And so for me, what had been really valuable is just recognizing that even though I knew I always had to create a budget, I, I'd create it, but I don't follow it as much. So yeah, I've, I've created a budget and it's helped me. I've spoken to a lot of suppliers after creating the budget and recognizing that I have to reduce my cost by at least 30%. And a lot of the suppliers have been really open to it. But before creating the budget, I never thought that was possible. Um, so I was just thinking about just some of the things that people can do um, to help with navigating these difficult times. So if anyone wants to read this blog that I wrote, um yeah head to my blog it's called the virtue collectors club um uh yeah link in the show notes kids and um, that that i'm kicking myself because uh was it the end of last year we, you know it's like it's sort of we at the moment we have loads of business and hardly any cash and and i had to go through and i like cancelled the the trello pro subscription and then realized how little of the pro subscription we used and just there's so many, I can't remember the figure, but I was like shocked how much it was that just canceling all these little 12 pound and 15 pound things. And, um, I, I probably if I canceled them two years ago, I would have saved myself thousands. No doubt. Um, no doubt. The, 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 I mean, we, I called yeah. my bookkeeper and I said to her, listen, I, I, I can't like I have two choices. Either you find a way to reduce your cost or I will be out of business and you lose me as a client. And a lot of that, it's just a very difficult conversation to have a lot of uh, uh, with a lot of people. And ultimately, when they hear that you're being honest and authentic and they don't want to lose you, it's better for every, all of us to take a bit of a, um, a cut in, in, in how much we charge to save some of our clients, right? And, and, and when times are good, they will remember that. And I will remember that. And why would I leave knowing that you have been with through, uh, you have been, um, been with me through these difficult times and don't underestimate which of the, all the supplies and, and, and sometimes how they can be, they can, they, they can help either however big they are. That Ask is uh, in, in the, in the pandemic, something that happened a lot in the, com in the co-working community. Um, and when I say co-working community, I mean, people like you who own a, or run a co-working space in London, um, people came together. Like I've never seen anything in my life like it. And we had a call every Tuesday and every Thursday. Um, it, it took a bit more time to establish trust because a lot of these people had seen each other at events once a month and they might have gone for a coffee together. So some, you know, some people might have only ever met three or four times in real life and then they're thrown in this pandemic together and people like people had to close their co-working spaces and then other co-working spaces went to pick up the furniture and help them move it and help them like send members to different co-working spaces that were nearer their homes. And you know, that, that, that collaboration in a crisis is where, you know, a lot of, a lot of deep friendships and all the people that were large in it, you know, acting like they were, you know, driving Lamborghinis in Dubai and drinking martinis sort of had to come and join in that conversation too and say, well, maybe I'm not quite as flash as I led you to believe before. Um, one, what was the thing? The other thing I was going to ask you. So one thing I want to shift to really quickly is, um, and I didn't prepare you for this is, is there anything that's happening now? We, we were around in like 2008 when, when the whole economy crashed then. Is there anything that happened then that you know how to handle yourself better now? Or that, that just, that's a question I like asking people and I didn't prepare you for it. So you might not have anything. Yeah, no, 2008, I was, I was lucky to be in a tech company that was doing well. And so uh, I wasn't in, uh, an entrepreneur, I was an employee. And so, um, even though there was a difficult, uh, it was a difficult financial crisis, I was lucky to be in a company that was doing really well. So it didn't, I didn't personally feel it as much. Um, I know a lot of people did. So no, I, I don't really have a, an answer for what people did then. Um, no, sorry, Benny. <laughs> But thank you for thank you for giving such an elegant elegant come down there. So the next bit I want to get into because it, it is I, I shit you not, folks. It is my favourite event I've ever been to in a co-working space in in nearly that. thirteen years of co-working. Wow. 
wow. nonstop. Um, and I, I'm going to have to do a bit of a build up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so it is, it's like a, a mashup of, it's like, if, if any of you are old enough to remember TFI Friday, it's like TFI Friday meets a games night and all in this stupendous cocktail actually in a bar in a co-working space. I don't know many, I know, I know co-working spaces with free beer on tap, but I don't know many co-working spaces in London with a bar and it is called the last Friday and it happens on the last Friday. So what is it? Can you, can you like, so I can send it to people, Gerald, can you like document the legend of last Friday? Yeah, no, I think, I think uh, we just, as a community at impact racing and, and we just, we're tired of like going to events that suck and going to events that's just about drinking or going to events that's just about like, you know what I mean? Like there's so many events that just are events for the sake of events, you know? And, and, and I thought, Hey, where do I want to hang out on a Friday? What do I care about? And the, the first thing is, Hey, I want to hang out with people that are going through the, the things that I'm going through, or at least can help me in the journey that I'm on as an entrepreneur, as a freelancer, as a creative, as a business, small business owner, big business owner. It doesn't matter. It's just being surrounded by those people. If I go to the pub, some days I might get lucky and meet those people. Some days I won't. And I just meet people that I don't get along with. So. Firstly, getting the right people through the door. And then secondly, creating a culture where people can just say hi. And it's just completely organic without playing some some crazy uh, games that's just going to make people feel weird. And so, yeah, we decided to turn the entire co-working space into a games night. And so imagine you know, 5,000 square foot of space with... Every game you can imagine from giant Jenga, je- um, uh, chess to old school Mario Kart to uh, Monopoly, Ocu- Oculus, Monopoly, Connect Fours everywhere. I mean, maybe over 100 games, right? And then having food served by a great restaurant. We've got rum punch on um, throughout the night. Some, we have comedy, uh, three or four up and coming talent that just performs on the night. We have some sometimes some inspirational speakers. And then we just ha- and then we have a DJ to kill it off. And it's just you've met so many people. There's group games. It's really hard to articulate, but it is you're right. It is the best event I have ever been to. And I'm glad to be part of the team that puts it together. And, and what happens together by entrepreneurs and volunteers. Crazy. And what, what happens is when you get in, you get given a wristband. So there's, there's, is there four different color wristbands? There's four groups, four teams. And yeah, you, you're in one team and the winner gets a crazy prize at the end. Don't spoil it, Bernie. <laughs> and I, like, I got to meet so many people, uh, as a result of being in a team and playing a game with people. And I, I kind of, you know, I love it now because you can tell by the way I'm talking, but like, I am so resistant to anything like that. And it, it felt like a, when it was originally explained to me, I felt, Oh no, this is going to be like a bad team training day in from by the BBC from the 1990s. And I absolutely loved it. There's, there's people that I met first last year at that. And I'm still friends and they're on Instagram and we've, met and this again and again and again um and why i love the way it brings together so many different um creators and musicians and business owners and freelancers all in one all in one mishmash and the energy is is lovely it's just so amazingly friendly and chilled out and relaxed and and the, even though the comedy guy always takes me out because i'm too keen to answer questions um i still i love it uh, and he was he was right actually um i am keen to answer questions but it, it's a great night when, when's the next one anyway the next last friday is the first time we're doing one in over four months so the, everybody there's so much anticipation 28th of april and it's a friday it's the last friday of april can't get it wrong. 28th of April. That's cool. It's, it's, um, and, and we're going to publish this in time about the pitch night because that's the same kind of energy, but a different format. Correct. Yeah, that's the also the last Friday of March, but that's not last Friday. That is on the 31st of March. That's when we're doing the pitch night. I could, I, I, could, I, could, I could sort of dress it up here and say I'm flying into London just for that night and sort Love of that. fabricate fabricate the truth a little bit now so, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a really nice community around that folks um is there anything i'm sure there was another question gerald i meant to ask you is there anything you'd like to say that i haven't asked you about because i know you like this fountain of community business stuff um 
I think I think uh, if anyone is in Brixton, if you are in South London and you are looking for the kind of co-working space that feels like your home away from home and something that is real, authentic, check out Impact Brixton. <laughs> how, how can we move on from there? So I am... Um, just before we go, folks, we, we'll, we'll put links in the show notes to all the things that Gerald's mentioned. And uh, the other thing I'd like to say is we have just, I've been dying to do this for ages, is we now have what we call a right club in five different co-working spaces across London. And we'll put a link in the show notes to this. And we've been running this in co-working spaces since 2015. And whatever your job role, whether you're a student, you work in a company, you're running a business, you know, you're, you're a parent, you need somewhere to go and have some space and write. And we do this for two hours, 10 till 12 in a different co-working space every weekday. We wanted to do this before lockdown, but that kind of didn't work out. Um, and it's a really good way, well, well, you know, a lot, lot of the same energy we've been talking about in this podcast, but it's a really good way to meet other people, get out of your house, um, and just connect with other people that are doing some form of writing. And the main takeaway everyone has when they come to that is I've done more work sitting around this table with potentially 10 strangers than I would have done if I'd stayed at home on my own. And very often, like getting out the house is, is a big step when you know, life is tough when there's, we're sort of halfway, you know, we're in a very strange place as a human race at the moment, particularly in the UK. Um, so getting together in times of toughness is, is really, really important. Anything else you want to say before we go? No, thank you so much. It's been an honor to be invited, uh, Bernie, as always, um, as a fellow co-working owner, thank you for the advocacy. You support so many small business, uh, so small business and co-working spaces and help us through the tough times. And I think for, on behalf of so many of us, thank you. Um, we really were grateful for the work that you put in to support us and our members. Cheers, sir. Okay. Thank you very much for your time and attention today, folks. Go to techlondon.io. There's a Slack channel, which has thousands of people who are creating and making and building businesses. And I'm going to go so far as to say saving the economy at this moment in time. And be careful out there. It is a jungle. Love it. You've been listening to The Tech London Show. If you're interested in joining the community or even making an appearance on this show, make sure you join our Slack group over at techlondon.io. Till next time.